So in this video, we're going to define a cylinder and then show an example of a parabolic cylinder. So when you, when you see the word cylinder, this is probably the picture that comes into your head, a right circular cylinder. But in, in calculus, we're going to have a more specialized definition for cylinder. And we're essentially going to say, hey, if we're living in a three-dimensional coordinate system, if you draw any plane curve, so a curve that lives in a single given plane, so let's say I draw a curve that lives in the ZY plane. So let's go like this. There's a curve and pretend that it's perfectly in the ZY plane. So it's a plane curve, let's call it C. And then, and then for the definition of a cylinder, you say once you have a plane curve, draw any line you want, any line you want that intersects that plane curve. And then a cylinder by definition, that's not a very good straight line, is it? A cylinder by definition is going to be the set of all lines parallel to this line that you drew that pass through the plane curve. So as long as I draw a line parallel to this line and that contains the plane curve, the set of all those uh, lines that exist that are parallel to the original line I drew form a cylinder. And what winds up happening is this original plane curve that you drew winds up getting replicated if I can replicate it over and over and over again. And when you append all of them together, you get the cylinder. So uh, here's a definition I got from Creative Commons. A cylinder is a surface that contains all the lines that are parallel to a given line. So you give the line and that pass through a given plane curve. So for example, um, z equals y squared, it happens to be a parabolic cylinder. Parabolic cylinder. And what we want to do is draw that parabolic cylinder. So the idea is when I look at this, I want to notice that the x variable is missing. And I have the equation z equals y squared. So z equals y squared would just be a parabola if I were just working in the zy plane and ignoring three-dimensional space, it would just be a parabola <laughs> containing the origin, if I can get it to draw there. It would just be a parabola containing the origin in the zy plane. So this would represent a plane curve, the parabola z equals y squared in the zy plane. So when I move out into a third dimension, what I do is I draw the parabola z equals y squared I attempt to draw it in the ZY plane. And this is where this is where better artist skills would be excellent. And then what I want to notice is that that X variable is missing. So just like when we were graphing planes in the previous homework assignment, if the X variable is missing, we need to draw things parallel to the X axis or the missing variable. So I'm going to draw a line that contains this plane curve. So I'm going to draw my line L, my given line that contains the plane curve. But I'm going to draw it parallel to the x-axis because the x variable is missing. So it's going to go like this. And then I'm going to, let's draw the x-axis in it because it contains that parabola. And notice there'd be infinitely many lines I could draw parallel to the x-axis that contain that parabola. And then what happens is this parabola gets replicated uh, in planes parallel to the zy plane over and over and over again. And when you put all of those parabolas together, you get a parabolic cylinder. So hard to represent in drawing if you're a poor drawer, a poor drawing person like me, poor artist. Uh, but if you were to graph this then in GeoGebra, you would get you would get this. Here's your here's your z axis. Here's your y axis. Here's the x axis coming out of the screen. So you would start off with that original parabola e in the z y plane, and then that line that I drew parallel to the x axis. The x axis is par there's infinitely many lines parallel to this line that I drew. And then so you extend the parabola out along the x-axis, parallel to the x-axis, and you get that parabolic cylinder. So if you're in GeoGebra, so a lot of times it's going to be 
uh, difficult to hand draw things in three-dimensional space. So if you're working in GeoGebra, if you go into your view menu, you'll see that it's got a 3D graphics option. Let's go ahead and turn the font size up just a hair here so things are more visible. So in the view menu, we got a 3D graphics menu. So if I turn that on, I'll turn off the 2D graphics uh, menu for now. And then I've got a function in three-dimensional space. It's really a function of two variables, x and y. So I'm going to go function of x comma y equals, and it was z equals y squared. So I'll type in my y squared. And then I mentioned uh, in a previous video that GeoGebra is actually going to put the x-axis here and the y-axis here. So if I go up to this rotate 3D graphics view and click that, I can rotate the x-axis into the position that our typical calculus books, book is using. So here's my x, here's my y, here's my z-axis. And you can see what's happened is that parabola, which we drew in the z-y plane, has been extended parallel to the x-axis. In fact, if we look straight on at the z-y plane, if we can get it oriented so we're just looking straight on, that's what we, what we see is just a parabola in the ZY plane. So hard to get it right where I want it. Lift it up. You can hopefully see right there's a straight onto the ZY plane. I had it for a second. You just see that parabola in the ZY plane. And it's a set of all lines that are then parallel to the X axis and contain Z equals Y squared or F of XY equals Y squared. So just like in uh, two dimensional space we let uh, y equals f of x in three-dimensional space z is going to equal f of x y because we have two independent variables x and y.